Lakers went D'Angelo Russell instead of Jalil Okafor last night, and the man who was part of making that selection uh, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show for the first time. I'm very pleased to, to welcome uh, Lakers general manager Mitch Kubchak here to the program. How are you, Mitch? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you for, for coming on this program. Uh, what, walk me through the selection process where you chose uh, the kid from the Ohio State uh, instead of uh, Okafor out of Duke. Well, it's a process, you know, that begins, you know, really a couple of years ago, although we're not allowed to, to go in high school gyms, you know, we can track the kids and, you know, certain online services and publications and McDonald's, all-star games. Um, and then, of course, they go to college and most of the kids at the top of the draft only stay one year. So you get the chance to, to watch them play, you know, for one year. Now, there's a couple wild cards. You know, Emmanuel Moutier, who originally committed to Larry Brown at uh, SMU and then went to China, you know, sprained an ankle and ended up missing most of the season. So you didn't get a chance to look at him as much as you'd like to. And then there was a couple of kids from Europe, um, you know, that you're not as familiar with also, although I've been over there and that's a big part of what we do in the league is, is that we do have to travel and look at these kids. I'm familiar with the kids in this country. Uh, then, then they declare, and then you can bring them in twice. You can work them out. You can take them out to dinner. You give, you give them to your coaches for a while. And, you know, o over the course of a year plus, you know, you have to make a decision. And we had a great feel that the town's kid was going to go to Minnesota and it was going to come down to the two. Uh, we were very intrigued with the European players. Uh, Emmanuel worked out for us and had a great workout. But it really came down to, you know, Okafer and, and Russell and, you know, we, we thought we took the guy um, that we thought would be best for us going forward. And I think they'll all have great careers. So how does he best fit what you're trying to do, Mitch? Well, we need help at a lot of positions. It's not like um, we could draft uh, by position. And uh, we had a promising rookie last year who did very well, um, Jordan Clarkson. And uh, we think they can both play together. And neither one of them is a prototype point guard. They both can play without the ball. They both would excel with the ball. So we think we have a backcourt going forward in this city for 10 to 12 years. Now, a lot remains to be seen. I mean, Jordan had a really good season on a limited basis on a really bad team. Uh, and, of course, um, D'Angelo is just a rookie. So, you know, we don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, we felt we got two players late in the draft. And that might be players one day. Uh, and we'll have to wait to find out how that plays out as well. Of course, that's Larry Nance Jr. and um, Anthony Brown from Stanford. Mitch Kupchak joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And then uh, in regards to Larry Nance, it's, uh, it's unfortunate his biggest day uh, of his life. And we're talking about a tweet that he sent uh, three years ago, uh, in which, you know, uh, his hashtag towards Kobe Bryant um, is something that clearly uh, Kobe uh, won't like. Um, and I know you mentioned to Dan that you didn't know about that tweet prior to him drafting. If you did, Mitch, would you have not drafted Larry Nance if you had known he had tweeted something out about Kobe that you know he and Kobe are going to have to hash out in a way? Probably not. Uh, I mean, probably would not have done anything differently. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not as simple as that. Um, we, we probably would have try to, you know, look into it more and get additional information. Uh, the, the bottom line is, is there are hundreds of players available for the draft, you know, and we actually track our Laker players, you know, social media history throughout the season and throughout the summer. But you're talking about trying to track hundreds of players that come out every year, whether they're in Europe or Asia, Australia, uh, or in our country, South America. Uh, and go back years and years and years. Uh, John Black, our PR director, has a great quote, and, and I stand by it, you know, which is basically nothing good becomes a tweeting. And uh, <laughs> this is certainly you know, the case. The kid feels terrible, just terrible. I'm sure he's huddling up with his dad and his mom, and you know, they're going to figure out you know, how they put this to rest as soon as possible. I don't think it's going to be a big issue at all. But I know the kid feels terrible on the biggest day of the year for him, maybe the biggest day of his life. Yeah, and you mentioned John Black, who's been there, done that with the organization for, for a very long time. He's one of the best in the business. Uh, are, are you guys going to 
after the Nances huddle up, try and get him and Kobe in the same room to, to, to make sure there isn't an issue with one of the all-time greats in the league's history and certainly Lakers' history and a kid who's going to try and bring the Lakers uh, be part of uh, the renaissance here? You know, we'll, we'll facilitate as, as best we can. Um, once again, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. And uh, the, the two, I mean, Larry Nance Jr. Will, will figure out how to handle this in the appropriate way. I know the coaches at Wyoming very, very well. Uh, and anybody that's ever known this kid, you know, thinks, thinks the world of him. Uh, so I don't think there's going to be an issue, and uh, they'll work through it, and and uh, we'll move on. When was the last time, Mitch, you spoke to Kobe about uh, this potentially being his last season? I'm not sure when it was. You know, I speak to him, we text, and uh, all I know is that, um, you know, this is the last year on his contract. Um, he indicated a year or two ago that this was going to be it, and that's where it stands. So um, I'm surprised that it, it continues to be a, a topic of discussion um, because I brought it up a month or so ago. It kind of had some legs, and, and now it's going to have some legs again. But I guess it is Kobe, and, you know, when you talk about him, it's going to be newsworthy. But that's where it stands. So it, it is a possibility that this isn't his last year as a Laker. Then Anything's a possibility, but, but we're really you know, starting to speculate. Uh, he wants to get well. Uh, he wants to play at a high level. I'm not worried about him depending upon his athleticism to do what he did 15 years ago. He'll figure out how to play and be effective regardless of his age and ability. But, but he needs, in his mind, to feel productive, uh, to feel as if he can do what he wants to do on the court. Uh, and he needs to feel healthy. And that's what the season's about. Mitch Kupchak, Lakers general manager, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, the, of the analysis of you choosing Russell second overall, Mitch, is the idea that you took that player at that position and will address anything in the front court uh, in, in free agency with a big name fish being landed. How accurate would that description be? Well, if you look at our roster, uh, if there's an area that we need some help, it's going to be the front court. And the draft is over. You know, we did draft a young kid, Larry Nance, senior, but he's he's may take a couple of years to even you know show that he belongs in the league. Um, so, in order for us to you know fill those spots on the roster, we're going to have to go to free agency. That starts July first. I don't know how it's going to play out. We'll be aggressive. You know, we have maximum cap room available. Uh, we're going to have a lot a lot available even next summer. So our next two summers are going to be wrought with, um, you know, pursuing free agents. And we have the ability to do that. And hopefully we can land a free agent or two. And, um, yeah, I mean, if, if we have a need, it's probably in the front court. Uh, Mitch, your uh, former coach, your former championship coach there in New York, went ahead and chose one of those Europeans that you said you took a look at. Uh, yeah. f how, how good can Porzingis be? From based on what you were able to scout of the Latvian, he he can be you know a unique um, player in this league that that really doesn't have a ceiling on how good he can be. Um, his first gift is God given, you know, which is his size. Um, he is legitimate seven one, you know. And I spoke to him and he. He was quick to mention, and that's in my bare feet, Mitch. You know, so, you know, in our business, a lot of times the, the height comes back and you wonder if there's a lift in the shoe. And, of course, it's always with the shoe on. So there's always a, an, an inch or two or three difference into how tall they really are. But he was legitimate seven one in bare feet. So if you put a pair of shoes on, you're talking about a kid seven two, seven three. 7'3". Um, he's a wonderful kid, uh, very competitive, has been playing at a high level in Europe. You know, congrats to his family, you know, his supporting siblings. You know, I got to know one of them uh, pretty well, and he's got a great support staff. And, you know, he's competitive at a high level. You know, when he doesn't succeed in something, he gets mad. Um, you know, he wants to get better and better. And he's got skills that big men don't have. You know, if he turns into a center in this league, um, 
you know, he's not going to be a low block center. And he's going to be down there doing jump hooks. You know, he'll pop out and shoot a three from the corner or a three from the top of the key. Very versatile. Uh, very, very versatile. So um, he's going to need to get stronger. And uh, people in this country don't know him as well. And there's always going to be, you know, somebody that looks at the draft and says, well, I don't know that kid, therefore I must boo. Uh, but the kid has tremendous upside. And uh, maybe it's a year or two. But I think he has a chance to be a heck of a player. And if he pans out, maybe Phil gets a couple votes for executive of the year. Right, Mitch? That might happen. You know, in order to win that award, you have to win a lot of games. And then there's always a guy or two that wins a lot of games also. Mm -hmm. uh, so, really, it's a great thing to get, you know, if you ever get it in your career. But I think Phil would want to win a lot of games. And that's what we want to do, and that's what's most important. And, Mitch, last question for you. Seeing the Clippers succeed in this town, there's, there's some people who think this, uh, the town is, uh, has, uh, has switched to a, a Clipper town based on what the Lakers did last year. What, what, what do you say to something like that? I think it's great for basketball. This city can support two franchises. You know, I'm from New York, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the Dodgers and the Giants had left by the time I got to be five or six years old, so I didn't know them as well. But I knew the Yankees and I knew the Mets. They came in, I think, in 1961, and here it's been, you know, 50-something years later. They're still doing, still doing, you know, the baseball thing, and the city can support both teams. The Yankees will always be the Yankees. Um, and the Mets will always be the Mets. Uh, they've both won championships. I'm not saying that in a bad way. Okay. No, I, and, no, I hear you. you know, okay, Mitch. Yeah, my, my point is is the Yankees have been around since, well, since the turn of the century. Yep. And, you know, the Mets, like the Clippers, have been around on a limited basis. So um, the city is big enough to support uh, the two franchises, and it's great to have the competition. Mitch, thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. We're just up the road from you, so I'd love to have you in in person at some point. Love to do it, Rich. Thanks, Mitch. You take care. That's right. Mitch Kupchak. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.